Okay, welcome everybody tonight to the uh, Candidate Forum sponsored by the Wisconsin Towns Association. We appreciate uh, everybody coming. Uh, this forum, as I said, is sponsored by the Wisconsin Towns Association Sheboygan County Unit. Uh, we are an organization that is comprised of the 15 townships in Sheboygan County, uh, as well as several villages. Our chair is Mr. Bill Gehring who is uh, the chair of the town of Sherman, as well as the chair of our Sheboygan County unit. My name is Dirk Zeilman. I am chair of the town of Mosul and vice chair of the Wisconsin Towns Association <coughs> Sheboygan County unit. Uh, tonight, our forum is taking place in this beautiful uh, fire building uh, that is jointly owned by uh, the village of Elkhart Lake and the town of Ryan. It was a nice collaborative effort. So a special thanks to uh, Village President Al Rudnick, where's Al? And to Town of Ryan Chair Don Sager for agreeing to host this event. Uh, this uh, forum is intended to give people an introduction to those who are in contested races in Sheboygan County. These are state and local races. There are five such races, meaning that we have a potential of 10 candidates. Every candidate is here tonight, and we appreciate that. Uh, because of the candidates and the limited time, obviously we're not going to be able to have a debate. So if you were expecting to see something like you saw uh, <laughs> Tuesday night, or, uh, the candidates almost hitting each other, that's not going to happen. Uh, what we are uh, asking instead is that each candidate take 10 minutes to tell a little bit about themselves and about why they are asking you to support Five minutes. Ten <laughs> candidates, five minutes. <laughs> All the candidates kind of fell over and started writing as they doubled their speech. Five minutes to tell a little bit about yourself and why people should support you. Uh, Chairman Bill Gehring will be the timekeeper. Uh, now, uh, Bill is a tough taskmaster. Master. If a candidate attempts to go beyond five minutes, Bill will press a button, the floor beneath you will open, and you will fall down a pole into the basement. Just kidding, but at four minutes and thirty seconds, Bill, this is just like uh, the stoplight, we're going to have a green, a yellow, and a red. At four minutes and thirty seconds, Bill will hold up a yellow sign. That, that means that you have thirty seconds to go. Uh, at five minutes, Bill will hold up a red sign, and then you are uh, expected to uh, finish your sentence and stop. <clears throat> Somewhat arbitrarily, I have uh, selected the order of candidate appearances. We will begin with the county candidates for county clerk, and then followed by the candidates for register of deeds. We will then uh, proceed to the candidates for the 20th state senate uh, district seat. And then we will uh, be followed by the candidates for the 27th Assembly District, finally having the candidates from the 26th Assembly District. Uh, the candidates uh, have determined who will speak uh, first through a coin flip. Uh, to try to be completely fair and to save time, <coughs> my introductions of each candidate will be very short. Basically, here's the candidate, here's the party, and here's the race they are racing for, or they are running for. So let's proceed to the forum. First, we will begin with the county clerk's race. Uh, as a result of the coin flip, the first candidate to speak will be the Democratic candidate for county clerk, Mr. David Rerwine. David? You ready? <laughs> Thank you, Dirk. Good evening, everybody. Again, my name is David Werwein, and I'm running for county clerk. I've been a lifelong resident of Sheboygan County. I graduated from North High School in Sheboygan. After I graduated, I enlisted in the U.S. Air Force, and after four years, I was honorably discharged. Upon returning to Sheboygan, I attended UW-Sheboygan and Lakeshore Technical College. In 1987, I started my employment with Sheboygan County, first in the Sheriff's Department as a dispatcher, and then in the Finance Department in the Accounts Payable Department, where I paid the bills for the county. Uh, after that, I moved over to the 
County Clerk's Office, which is where I have been working for the past 14 years. During this time period, I was also a part-time deputy sheriff for Sheboygan <laughs> County, so I've been around the area for quite a bit. In this election, only one thing truly matters, and that's true experience. Because as a county elected official, it doesn't really matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican, a liberal or a conservative. County officials don't set policy, and we don't make the laws. Our job is to implement the laws as set by the legislature in the most cost-effective manner possible. The position of county clerk is not a managerial position. It is a true working job. The county clerk's office is responsible for a vast, wide a range of duties and functions. Uh, first thing is, you know, we are the secretary to the county board, and we're responsible for all of their records. We maintain the website for the county board and all of the county <coughs> meetings. We handle the property and liability insurance for the county whether it's the vehicles, the property itself, um, and we also take care of the claims that arise from those factors. We oversee the county telephone and voicemail system. We issue marriage licenses and domestic partnerships. We oversee the dog licensing. We issue the tags out to the local treasurers, and the money that comes back in at the end of the year, what is left over after our expenses of the tags, the advertisements, and so on, gets donated to the County Humane Society. In the last few years, we've donated anywhere between forty-five dollars to $60,000 a year that goes to the Humane Society. We process passport applications in our office. Uh, we are open 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, to do those. Uh, you can go to a post office, but there you have to make an appointment. With us, you can come in, and that same $25 that the post office collects, the county gets to keep that here locally. We issue conservation licenses and DNR vehicle registrations, ATVs, boats, so on. We process woodcutting claims, probate claims. We maintain the county's coroner's records, and other items too numerous, but not trivial, by no mean to mention here. And one of the most important parts of the county clerk's job is we administer the elections for the county. <clears throat> Part of the county clerk's role in the elections is programming the elections tabulation equipment, what you are putting your paper ballot into at the polls, or if you're touching the touch screen, the electronic voting. Doing the programming requires not only experience in the programming <clears throat> of the software, but understanding the interplay between wards, districts, and uh, uh, reporting units. Okay, It also requires attention to detail in meticulous fashion upon which step can be done because if you don't do the steps in the correct order, you're going to screw up the whole election. Trust me, it happens. I said a few minutes ago it's our job as elected county officials to do our jobs in the most cost-effective manner. According to the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, the errors that were in Waukesha <coughs> County, which I'm sure many of you have heard about in the last year or so, cost Waukesha County over $250,000 just for the elections, reprogramming, and so on. Now, Sheboygan County is not as large as Waukesha County, but if the person that the county elects to do the job of county clerk doesn't have the experience or expertise to do this job, just our April election will cost us over $60,000 of program. Now, Julie Glancy is retiring after 18 years after being our county clerk, and she's endorsing me to replace her. When our local municipal clerks have a question or a problem, they call the county clerk's office, the office with experience. So with your vote for Dave Warwine on November 6th, uh, Sheboygan County will continue to have that experience. Thank you. Thank you, David. Our next uh, speaker will be John Dolson, the Republican candidate for County Clerk. John? <coughs> All right. Thank you for the opportunity to talk. I'd like to get to meet you after possibly one-on-one -on -one and, and tell you more about myself. Uh, Dave did a great job of explaining what the County Clerk's Office does, and I'm going to have five minutes to tell you why I think I'm right for that leadership role as the County Clerk. About me, my background, I'm currently a self-employed 
financial advisor uh, dealing with investments and insurance for my clients. And prior to that, I was a private banking officer for M&I Bank in Sheboygan, and before that, Johnson Bank in Kohler. And along with all of that over the years, uh, I was the chairman of the YMCA Board of Managers for the Sheboygan branch for 12 years in a row, uh, dealing with just shy of a $2 million budget there, and dealing with all the employees and their issues there that the board deals with. And currently, I'm on the countywide board of directors for the YMCA. Um, along with that, uh, congruent to that, um, let's see. I was the uh, past commodore for the Sheboygan Yacht Club, dealing with a half million dollar budget there and 25 part-time and full-time employees and dealing with their insurance and tax issues there that the board deals with. I'm the current uh, vice chair for our church council, uh, Trinity Lutheran Church in Sheboygan, uh, dealing with just shy of a million, uh, two million dollar budget there and dealing with employees with the church and school and I sit on the uh, financial review committee for the church as well and with that um, I've been a 16 year uh, classroom volunteer for junior achievement uh, consistently and um, along with that uh, on the steering committee for my son's boy scout troop uh, I was on a steering committee for the Ellis Historic Neighborhood Association that was recently started, along with several others, the uh, Sheboygan Neighborhood Pride Project uh, that's going on in Sheboygan. And um, the reason I'm telling you all these things of, um, about leadership roles, dealing with budgets, <clears throat> it does deal with leadership. It does deal with managing people. I've owned several small businesses employing people. Um, being a financial advisor with um, the governance of FINRA and the SEC, you have to keep meticulous records. Um, with all these boards that I've sat on and dealt with, um, there's been um, setting budgets, meeting budgets, which is extremely important. And with all of that, I find that these, these make uh, one right for leading an office. There's a few people in uh, staff in the county clerk's office, and with that, I feel I'm the right person to lead that office. So I appreciate your time here, and I'd appreciate your vote in November. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, we will uh, now proceed to the uh, race for register of deeds. Our first speaker will be Ellen Schleicher, the Democratic candidate for Register of Deeds. Ellen? Thank you for inviting us and uh, sharing your time with us. Um, I appreciate that. I've been here Register of Deeds since 2006. Um, prior to that, I worked at the Kohler Company for 36 years. Um, Don Sager was my one of my first bosses, kind of a mentor to me. Uh, he uh, talked me into going to school. So I attended Lake Shore Technical College um, and, a, and got my degree in, my associate's degree in supervisory management. And then went on, went on to Lakeland College to study for uh, business, bachelor's, I got my bachelor's. Um, I currently am enrolled in um, UW-Madison with their certified public manager program because I believe in education, I believe in learning, and um, I think in our jobs, we always have to learn. Um, my husband, Mike, and I have been married for 32 years. Um, he works at H&H &H Utility, and our night job is uh, our farm. We farm, we raise livestock, and um, cash crop. Sorry. Um, I am very active in the, in the community also. I currently serve on uh, Rebuilding Together. I'm a board member where I write grants for um, <coughs> dollars to help folks stay in their homes. I run various fundraisers uh, where I raise money to help out uh, the Sheboygan County Food Bank, Bridgeway House, uh, Safe Harbor, um, 
and other charities. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, the Salvation Army I volunteer with. Um, and then a little bit about our office. If you don't know what our office does, we record your deeds, mortgages, uh, less pendants, um, trade names, corporations, articles of incorporations. We also issue certified birth certificates, death certificates, marriage certificates, domestic partnership. And we also um, have the DD-214s that we give to the veterans for their um, when they retire. Um, since I've been in office, I've impl implemented new software programs that have helped our land records be more efficient, um, have worked with the folks who come in our office every day, and did uh, help them with things that they, their ideas, and took their ideas and implemented them to make things easier for their office for what they do. So, I'm sorry I'm very nervous. Uh, I um, just really love to help people and I try and uh, do the best customer service I can do and um, I appreciate your support on November 6th. Thank you, Ellen. Our next speaker will be Chris Wheeler, who is the Republican candidate for Registered Deeds. Chris? Good evening, and thank you for hosting this tonight. Again, I'm Chris Wheeler, the Republican candidate for Register of Deeds. Um, I guess I've, I'll start off by saying I've been a lifelong resident of Sheboygan County, with the exception of the years I spent in college and a few after that, where I moved to Barron County and started a small business for a few years. Um, then had four children of my own within a very short time span and decided that grandparents were just a wonderful, wonderful thing to have around and that brought me back to the Sheboygan area. Um, I went to school at UW La Crosse and got my bachelor's of science degree there and after getting that degree we, again we moved to Barron and I started up a small business. Um, when I moved back to Sheboygan I started I actually worked with the daycare center at the with Sheboygan um, County Interfaith Organization to establish a daycare center within the Bridgeway House. Um, after that experience, I started a business up in my own home. Um, through all of my small business experiences, I have gained some knowledge in the area of um, working with state government. I have experience in grant writing. I have experience in doing financial reporting to the state. And I've also um, done some work with um, businesses that required us to follow specific um, licensing regulations um, going through the licensure project with the, or process with the state of Wisconsin. Um, those experiences um, led me, I, I think, toward an interest in government operations. And in 2008, um, there was an opening in the district that I live in for a county board supervisor. And uh, I was approached and asked if I would be interested in trying something like that, and I thought, sure, I'll give that a shot. So in 2008, I ran as a write-in candidate and won that election. In 2010 and 2012, I was re-elected to the position. <coughs> I um, serve on the Health and Human Services Committee, and currently vice chair of that, and now this last term, I was also put on the property committee. Um, my experience with the county board has led me toward my interest in the position of Register of Deeds. I think that I can take my experience um, in working with some of the other management team members. Sheboygan County has a wonderful management team in place that is just doing an awesome job at keeping the tax rates low in the county. Um, not only the county board members, but the management teams that head each department in the county. We should all be very proud of the work that they do, and I would be honored to be part of that team. Um, as a Register of Deeds, I would strive to provide uh, just timely and accurate and friendly customer service. I've held a lot of different customer service jobs as I was coming through high school and college, sometimes three or four at a time, just to pay my way through, um, and had been offered management positions at several of those jobs. Um, I think it's important that we work together as a team, and I would strive to 
have a team approach if I get this position. I also want to make sure that we're taking advantage of all of the efficiencies that we can and that we're running the office in the most cost-effective way possible. And that effort would start not just within the office itself and the procedures that we follow as a local unit, but I think um, one of my goals would be to become an active member of the Wisconsin Register of Deeds Association. And I'm specifically interested in becoming part of the legislature committee um, and possibly um, a representative with the Wisconsin Counties <coughs> Association. I think that um, the fees that we pay when you come in to have a property transfer done or any of your records copied, um, the state takes a very big chunk of those fees that the county collects. And I think we need an advocate for Sheboygan County and, you know, as for each county throughout the state to make sure that the state isn't just taking this big chunk of funds and using it for things other than what the fee is supposed to cover. In my mind, a fee is meant to cover the service that you're providing. And if there is an access fee to the fees being collected, um, I think we need to really push the state to make sure that either they take less from the county so that we can cover our costs or those fees should be lowered and not be such a burden to the consumer, uh, the members of our county. So on November 6th, I would appreciate your vote and look forward to possibly serving as a Register of Deeds. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, we will next to go to the uh, race for the 20th uh, State Senate District. Uh, we. The 20th represents a portion of the south and western part of Sheboygan County. And our first speaker will be Tanya Lohr, the Democratic candidate for the 20th State Senate District. Tanya? So I'm Tanya Lohr. I'm running for State Senate in the 20th Senate District. And thank you so much for um, giving us the opportunity to speak with you today. Um, I grew up in the small town of Marathon, Wisconsin. Has anyone ever heard of Marathon? Excellent, very good. Um, small town, just west of Wausau, Wisconsin. My mother was an elementary school teacher. My father was a high school social studies teacher until he left the profession to take over his family's small business. <coughs> Inspired by my parents, I decided to become an educator as well. And I'm currently in my 17th year of teaching. And I've uh, taught at Westland <coughs> West High School for the last 14 years. That's where I met my husband, Andy, who is a chemistry teacher there, and we've been married for over 10 years. We have six-year-old twins, Elena and Idrit, and I also have two stepdaughters from Andy's previous marriage who are a very important part of our family as well. I spent the first 15 years of my profession really taking education for granted. I just assumed that my students would have the same high-quality education that my parents' students had had, and that my children would have the same high quality education that I have had. And I didn't really consider that it could be any other way in the state of Wisconsin. The other thing I took for granted was politics. And I assumed that we elected some Republicans, and we elected some Democrats, and we all got together in Madison and worked together and came up with legislation that everyone could live with. So as long as I read the newspapers and watched the news and always voted, that that meant that I was playing my role in a democracy. We lost that art of compromise over a year and a half ago, and the partisan divide that has occurred afterwards has split our families, and our neighborhoods, and our friendships, and I realized that it was going to take a whole lot more than voting and reading the newspaper to get everybody working together again. So I decided to run for state senate, and I started doing the doors, knocking door to door, on July 1st, and I've knocked on over 4,000 doors since July 1st. And it's been a fantastic experience because the people at the doors have really taught me a lot about what it means to be a good leader. And the politics that I had observed was really politicians telling people what they should be worried about and what they should be concerned about. And it didn't take me long in the doors to realize that people know what they're concerned about. They don't need an elected official knocking on their doors and telling them, you should be worried about X, Y, Z. People know what keeps them up at night why it keeps them up at night. And what they need is elected officials who are willing to listen to their concerns, regardless of party, and also willing to listen to their solutions. Because what I found is that not only do people know what they worry about and the issues that they're concerned about, but 
they also have some really good ideas about how to solve it because they're living it. This is their life. Um, so I've had a fantastic time talking to people about their concerns and hearing what their solutions are. The other thing that I've learned on the doors is that people really have a lot more common ground than sometimes we're led to believe. And when I ask people what their concerns are, um, it's amazing how similar they are to the concerns that their neighbors are talking about and that their colleagues are talking about, that my colleagues are talking about, and that I have myself. And when you find that common ground, it opens up a dialogue that we've been missing for a year and a half, but we really need if we're going to start working together again. So what I bring to the table is a willingness to sit down with colleagues, Republicans, Democrats, independents, and start working together again to find the solutions that we need to keep our state working and moving forward again. So again, thank you for your time, and um, there's going to be time afterwards to meet. And I also have a website, www.lauraforsenate.com, and you can find out a lot more about um, my issues, my positions, and a little bit more about me. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Tanya. Our second candidate for the 20th uh, District uh, State Senate seat is Mr. Glenn Grossman, who is the Republican candidate for State Senate. Glenn? Well, I'm glad to be here. Um, I'm running for election. I, you've seen me before at a lot of the Towns Association meetings in the past. I'm running on my record. I'll also tell you a little bit what I'd like to accomplish in the next four years. Uh, I think in the last, four, in the last two years, we've done a tremendous lot in a variety of fields. I think the area where we've had the biggest impact is on education, and that's in the area of Act 10. Since I've been in the legislature, I've tried to help out the school districts by making it easier to remove a, a, a bad school teacher. Uh, I met with, maybe similar to this, with the school superintendent. They've had a lot of other complaints about Wisconsin's mediation arbitration law. So we've changed things by Act 10. Even though it was controversial, the teachers union fought us on it. Uh, we have made it easier to remove a bad teacher. We've made it easier to have the administration in school districts uh, assign teachers to do what they want to do. We've made it easier to have them keep teachers around after 215 or 230 or 245, whatever the individual district is. And we think, therefore, we've overwhelmingly improved the schools in this state. We also had a challenge in the business climate. Two years ago, Forbes magazine ranked Wisconsin the 48th best state in the country to do business. And there's a ranking in which we said that businesses in Wisconsin were 43rd best in the country in tax business climate. I was fortunate enough to be a leader in changing the tax laws so that we are going to make Wisconsin a state in which agriculture <coughs> and manufacturing our essence income tax free over the next five years. There is no income tax in places like Texas and Florida. I think it's important we do something big to, uh, to put us in a situation in which we pull our figures up quite a bit. I also was fortunate enough to author a law, removing a law that was only two years old, which is a real problem for business. Great punitive damages and jury awards if someone screamed discrimination, be it age discrimination, sex discrimination, race discrimination, what have you. Uh, that was really, I think, one of the worst laws in the country. It put Wisconsin at a big competitive disadvantage compared to states like Minnesota, Michigan, and Iowa, not to mention it was incredibly unfair to business. And we, we repealed that law. Uh, I also think in the last couple of years, as I had in the whole rest of the time we've been in the legislature, I established myself as an independent. I disagree with Governor Walker on some issues. Uh, fought him on uh, his desire to allow the University of Wisconsin and Madison to raise tuition on their own. I think tuition is high enough and it's something that ought to go through the state legislature. Uh, fought him on his effort to deregulate or largely deregulate rent to own industry in the state of Wisconsin, which I think uh, continues uh, my past practice of, well, I think I'm one of the more conservative senators in on legislature. I uh, find it very easy to cross the aisle. As far as in the next session, I think with regard to education, we have two, I have two goals. Uh, I think I want to make the schools more skills driven, okay? Um, right now we have too many people graduating from college with kind of a liberal arts degree, but they're sitting out there with a big student debt. Meanwhile, we have a problem if you talk to particularly manufacturing, we have a shortage of welders, a shortage of machinists. And we have to do what we can to push more kids in these fields and maybe begin to learn more about these fields even on the high school level. With regard to business, well, we're no longer that low as far as business climate is concerned. Uh, I think there's more we can do. In addition to improving the education system for them, 
I think there are changes we can make in the labor laws that will benefit Wisconsin business and not only Wisconsin business, <coughs> but municipalities as well. I also think it's time we simplify and cut the income tax. Uh, I used to do some income taxes prior to being in the legislature. And Wisconsin has one of the most complicated income taxes in the country. I'm fortunate enough to be on a committee right now which is looking at that. And I'll be disappointed if in the next two years we don't both cut the income tax and make it a lot simpler like other states. Um, another goal I have <coughs> in the session is to rein in individually high municipalities on things like shared revenue that you get. Places like the city of Milwaukee may be getting over 20 times per person uh, uh, the amount of shared revenue that you get some towns around here. That's a leftover from the time maybe 15 or 20 years ago in which a shared revenue formula I think was skewed to the big cities. Uh, I don't know why we'd be giving the city of Milwaukee so much or the Milwaukee schools for that matter so much to educate kids. Uh, the city of Milwaukee school system may be getting um, a significant amount more. They are getting a significant amount more to educate the kids from places like Woodsburg, Random Lake, and Cedar Grove, and I think we should turn that around as well. But my final goal, uh, will we do something about the out-of-control welfare? Our welfare system right now is once, one more time makes Wisconsin a welfare magnet. Uh, and in addition to the cost, even greater damages to the children. I think we've created a system in which even though many families uh, single parents do a good job. Uh, I think um, we can, we should do something about it so we no longer encourage that sort of family makeup. Thank you, Glenn. We will now uh, hear from candidates uh, for the 27th Assembly District. Broadly speaking, the 27th represents kind of the northern part of the county. Our first speaker will be the Republican candidate for the 27th Assembly District, Steve Castell. Steve? Thank you, Derek. Well, I thank you for all uh, for being here and for having us. Considering the kind of year we've been through in Wisconsin, the last couple of years, i got to give you credit for, for uh, putting yourself in a position to listen to more campaigning for, for another night. It'll be all over very soon. Uh, we're getting there. You know, Senator Lila mentioned at the beginning of the night that two years ago uh, we were facing that $3.6 billion budget. I think we met at the, in the southern end of the county two years ago and we talked about that. It was easy to talk about because we were used to talking about <coughs> deficit budgets and big numbers. But there weren't a lot of certain ways that we, were, that we knew we were going to be able to solve it. There was a big nut to crack. And, uh, the fact that we had been talking about those deficit budgets over the years meant that by the time we got to two years ago, all the tricks had been done. Um, all of the, the sleight of hand and the moving around of money and the, and, the, and the budget gimmicks were done. There was no more of that to do. So we had to do something that actually fixed the problem. Senator Lydon also mentioned earlier, now we're looking at not only a budget surplus, but for the first time in forever we put a significant amount of money in a rainy day fund. That's good news. Yeah, I know there are people who would love to get their hands on that money and use it for something else, and I understand that. But the fact that Wisconsin finally has put itself in a position to be able to do that is something that, that not only is historic for Wisconsin, but I think people around the country are looking at it and saying, you know what, maybe we, we should get our act together too. We were in deep trouble. And one of the reasons I ran for the legislature Go back when I first did. It's because I'd been a longtime school board member, and, I, and education was something that was very, very important to me. What I knew from those years as a school board member is that our system was completely unsustainable, and it was being held up with really funny math for a long time. We had runaway labor costs that were driven by something that had absolutely nothing to do with what was being done within school buildings, and absolutely nothing to do with what our expectations and hopes were for kids. It was driven by uh, layers of contracts that, that, that built up over many, many years. <clears throat> every, every new school board that gets elected inherited that layer of contracts over the years. And, and you can never take anything away without a quid pro quo. The first phrase you ever hear in contract negotiations is quid pro quo, meaning you've got to buy it with something of equal or greater value. And so we just kept escalating. Not only was our educational system <clears throat> funding and financing on the verge of collapsing, in fact, it should have collapsed years earlier if it hadn't been propped up with, 
with kind of false uh, funding uh, mechanisms. But it was going to bring our whole state down. We were in that deep of trouble. So when we got, when we started kicking into the corners last session, we found some more surprises. Uh, we found out that we owed something like fifty million dollars to the state of Minnesota because we had not paid the bill on our reciprocity agreement. We found out that the courts had had uh, uh, slapped back the previous administration and said, you know what, you're going to have to pay back the patient's compensation fund, hundred million dollars plus interest, mm -hmm. which is a good, the group got to go to a pretty large number. All that's paid. The bills are now paid. And now we're at a place in Wisconsin where we can start making budget decisions from, from a, a point of long-term planning and careful consideration <clears throat> and prioritizing rather than just trying to put out the latest fire and, and crisis management. That's a really good place to be. We didn't get there with a singular kind of action. Act 10 played a huge part. And frankly, I think we all should, if you know someone who, who's a public employee in Wisconsin, you should thank them for, for, for being a major participant in that. We all, any of us, including legislators who, who get a state paycheck, uh, took a hit. It was, but it, it, and it saved literally thousands of jobs. It prevented the potential, the very real potential and likelihood of massive layoffs. But that wasn't the only thing that got us into good shape. It took a lot of fiscal discipline on the part of, of the legislature and the governor's office. It took um, a lot of people not being able to fund their pet projects or to uh, start that new program that was so rampant over the years. Everybody has great ideas and they all want to get them started. And so finally, um, we were able to, to as, as a legislature, along with the governor's office, say, we, you know, we're, we're going to be the big kids. We're going to be the adults in the room and get things in order. So um, what we need to be very careful about now is not doing things that take us back to the bad old days. And it would That's be way too minutes. easy to get there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Our next speaker is Steve Bauer, who is the Democratic candidate for the 20th, 27th uh, Assembly District. Steve? My notes are a little bigger than everybody else's. <clears throat> I want to thank the Village Board of Elkhart Lake for hosting this event. Also want to thank the WTA for putting this all together. This is the time we should be putting aside whether or not one's a Democrat or a Republican. Um, you should be deciding on who's best to serve the interests of you and the interest of District 27. My name is Steve Bauer of Plymouth, Wisconsin, and I'm running for State District 27. For the past 40 years, I've been self-employed, and for 34 of those years, my wife and I uh, have owned and operated the SNR Bar and Restaurant located between Sheboygan Falls and Plymouth. I'm not a newcomer to business, and I'm not a newcomer to government. I currently serve as town chairman in the town of Sheboygan Falls for the past three terms. Without increasing the tax levy while repairing roads and maintaining services, I still kept a balanced budget. We need a fresh face in Madison uh, with new ideas and intend to be that and I intend to be that fresh face. I plan to offer much needed ideas serving the people like those I know and respect in my district. A common sense approach is needed everywhere, especially in Madison. <clears throat> As town chairman, I recently uh, turned down the largest PCB landfill site in the state of Wisconsin. At some point in time, we all need representation from time to time. As town chairman of the town of Sheboygan Falls, I was in need of some representation. <clears throat> so I called my representatives. <clears throat> I had the landfill site on my agenda. I called to invite them to my meeting for their input or where they stood on the issue. One assembly person I called and no one called back. I called that person twice. <clears throat> I also called our senator and was put on a calendar 30 days prior to my meeting by his staff. He did return my phone call three hours before my meeting just to cancel. <clears throat> the other assembly person, not from our district, showed interest in coming but also did not show up. I believe this was a controversial issue that they were unwilling to enter into. 
this is why I'm running for state assembly. Some of my priorities, working with small and local businesses to create jobs and keeping jobs in our community. <clears throat> to increase accountability. I'll work to cut wasted spending, ensure our tax dollars are being used and spent effectively. <clears throat> Higher education is a key to our future and the community. Affordable Health Care Act. <clears throat> for instance, pre-existing conditions. I'm one with pre-existing conditions. If it wouldn't have been for the Affordable Health Care Act, right today I would not have my insurance. I was canceled earlier prior to this. I'm an advocate of term limits. If there were term limits put in place in the State Assembly, we would all be better off. Accountability from start to finish. Example, the Morgan Aircraft. The process of determining financial soundness of a company and the credibility of a product had widely been overlooked by our local legislatures. There was wasted spending there. <clears throat> I'll do what's necessary to keep the 27th district in balance. <clears throat> As I go door to door, I have passed out <clears throat> over 10,000 of these pieces. I've been able to talk to people personally. I am watching the and what I've been finding is uncertainty in which the economic balance uh, the economy is facing. I'm sure I can do a better job. Hard work. And hands-on approach is a good start. <clears throat> I see division of friends, relatives, and neighbors. This direction of the division is not the answer. There are other solutions. Usually, when you're unhappy with the way your <clears throat> legislatures are handling things, it might be time for a change. I have learned government is only as good as the people who are elected to office. At this point, I would like to thank you for this opportunity, and please vote for Steve Bauer on November 6th. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. We're now going to hear uh, from the candidates for the 26th uh, district. Uh, the 26th, broadly speaking, again, represents kind of the south and central part of the county. Our first speaker will be Mike Ensley, who is the Republican candidate for the 26th Assembly District. Mike? Thank you, Dirk, and thank you to the Towns Association, to the uh, village of Elkhart Lake, as well as the town of Ryan. I'm just finishing my first term in Madison. As you all know, it was a real quiet, kind of slow term. Um, give a background on myself, born and raised in Sheboygan Falls, went to Sheboygan Falls High School, graduated from there, and then graduated from University of wisconsin Platteville with a double major in business and psychology, and a minor in sales training and personnel spent literally the last, almost the last 30 years in the private sector. Uh, my entire career was spent with companies such as Stolting and Keel, or what used to be called Stolting and Keel, uh, Pemco and Sheboygan, and then I was at Thomas Industries uh, for the last 17 years, up until uh, a famous date for me, and that was, uh, that was September 11, 2009. That was the day that someone walked into my office to tell me I no longer had a job. I've never not had a job. I've been working literally since I've been about 14. I knew it was coming because I watched a whole lot of my other friends get walked out the door as well with a cardboard box with their belongings in, some of them who have been there for 30 years themselves. The first time that happens to you, your life changes. I had a good job, I made good money, and I knew that I had to make some major change to my lifestyle. I'm a divorced father of two, two kids in college, and I sat down with my budget and said, I've got to make changes. I sold my house because I couldn't afford to stay there for very much longer with my only income coming in from unemployment. Sold a vehicle. Got rid of direct TV and I couldn't watch a Sunday NFL ticket and all the NFL games, which was my favorite. And I looked for jobs. And I received a check, an unemployment check. And there were no jobs. And I had a pretty good resume. I've always wanted to become involved in politics for a long, long time, probably since after college. I was always thinking more along the local level of city council or county board, that type of thing. 
And then I got together with a bunch of my friends who also lost their jobs, and somebody said, you know, why don't you take up your, you know, one of the interests you've had that's running for, for public office? And I ran. And I won. And now I ask for your vote in my re-election effort. Politics, I, some, I sometimes think people make it more complicated than it is. There are some complicated parts of it, but the majority of it, in my opinion, isn't that complicated. It's common sense. The thing that bothers me is that we had $3.6 billion budget deficit. And we were stealing money from one pot to make the big pot look a little more full than what it really was. Our federal government right now owns $16 trillion in debt, most of it to China. I happen to believe that is just wrong. There's nobody in this room, I don't know of any entity that can do what our government does. And that is they take money from us out of our wallets for taxes, and then they run out and they just keep asking you for more money, and then we still go into debt. It's wrong. I don't care if you're a Republican, a Democrat, or an Independent. It's wrong. When I ran for office and I went door to door, I told the people I had three things I, that I thought needed to be done. One, we needed to balance our budget. Number two, we needed to eliminate our budget deficit. And number three, we needed to improve the business climate in the state of Wisconsin. Believe me, after nearly 30 years in the business world, I was well aware because my customers and prospective customers told me that, that our business was literally and figuratively going south. More and more taxes on the businesses, just like the homeowners. A lot more taxes, more regulations more litigation, fraudulent lawsuits, all cost money and add to the cost of the product of the service they're providing. Wisconsin was losing its competitive edge. Hence, companies left. ASA, Lear Corporation, Pentair, Thomas Industries, the list goes on and on and on. I've lived in Sheboygan Falls, in Los Angeles, in Atlanta, in Detroit, and I've had, and I've had the fortune of working for companies where I sold products to people that run the realm of an organizational chart, meaning a CEO up in the top boardroom to people at the low level. All of us know <coughs> that we have to live within our means. We absolutely have to. I am proud of the fact we took a $3.6 billion budget deficit. It's now wiped out. There was some pain, but we are now where we need to be. There's probably there's hardly any other states that can say that. Now we have to maintain it and continue our reforms to, hold, to give the taxpayers what they really deserve, and that is a proper use of their money. Thank you. Appreciate it, and I ask for your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Our next and our last speaker uh, this evening is Mike Nelke, who is the Democratic candidate for the 26th Assembly uh, District. Mike? Thank you, Derek. Uh, thank you everyone for coming tonight. Uh, thank you guys for your service to your communities. Um, you know, I know that you didn't get into these uh, town and local uh, government jobs for the money. Trust me, I understand that. Uh, but you, you're fulfilling a great civic duty to your communities. And if it won't be for you, uh, we wouldn't have the quality of life that we have today. We wouldn't have the ability to come up here and express our ideas in an open venue like this. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Towns Association, for hosting this. Uh, thank you to the village for um, having us here tonight. Mike, I want to uh, express my condolences at the loss of your uncle today. Um, I, I knew him and I knew your, your cousin, so uh, my condolences to you on that. Um, I'm Mike Yonke. 33-year veteran of the Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department, lifetime resident of Sheboygan County, born and raised in Plymouth, currently live in Sheboygan with my wife Anne, and two adult uh, children uh, who are grown and two young grandsons who live up in Howard's Grove. Uh, they're the apples of my eye and uh, I love my family very much and uh, in all of the things we talked about tonight from both sides of the aisle are, are very important issues that cannot be taken lightly from education to, I don't think anybody in the room feels that they aren't being taxed enough. Because if they do, you know, I could use a little extra money. Uh, within the sheriff, uh, last eight years, I was your sheriff, elected sheriff. I ran a 180 member department with a $17 million budget. Uh, 
I worked on both sides of that union aisle as, as it related to um, collective bargaining and the ability to sit down and compromise. I had, uh, I worked both sides of that. You know, it, uh, uh, when I was in the union, I, I sat on the negotiating committee. I worked uh, on the bargaining committee and the uh, grievance committees. As sheriff, I was on the other side of the table. I had to terminate a, a handful of people <clears throat> in my job as sheriff, and that's not an easy thing to do. But, you know, there's a system in place that a process that you go through that we've lost now as part of this Act 10 in the stripping of 30 plus years of uh, labor rights. And, you know, I have, I have an issue about that. Now, I'm not to say that, uh, that any of us can't give a little bit more, you know, but it, it, wasn't, it wasn't even <coughs> presented that way. It was presented in a way, you know, uh, it's our way or the highway, uh, no negotiation, uh, shut people out of the process, ran through uh, legislation in six days. Uh, I don't know if any piece of legislation in the state of Wisconsin that has gone through the process that quickly. So there are some real issues from the get-go. And the governor himself admits that has, had, had he had that to do over again, he probably <coughs> would have done it differently. So, you know, this, this whole process created what Tanya had talked about before, that divisiveness, that uh, anger within our communities. And, and I, you know, I, we all suffered as a result of that, and I don't think that's right. I'm a man that spent his entire career in law enforcement upholding the Constitution of the state and the Constitution of the nation, enforced the laws, and I, I believe in, in fairness for all. And I think a lot of people were slighted in this budget process. Uh, community involvement. I think it's very, very important, and I know a lot of you are involved in your communities in a vast number of ways. But I think it's very important for a legislator to be involved in their community. Um, I'm on the board of directors for the Sheboygan County United Way, where I also uh, serve on their planning and allocations committee. Planning and allocations committee is responsible for allocating the money to the 26 programs that United Way funds in Sheboygan County to the tune of two, over $2 million. I think our goal this year is like, what, $2.6 million. Um, I'm also on the board of directors for the um, Chaplaincy Healthcare, uh, uh, the uh, Healthcare Chaplaincy Program in Sheboygan County. Uh, we have a broad pride at all of Piggly Wiggly's this Saturday. I, I guess that five minutes was really quick, and I know the food is waiting. Um, I have a reputation that I'm very proud of. Uh, I think you all know who I am. I've been, in, you know, I worked in the, on the village level. I've worked in Cascade for 25 years. I worked for the town of Linden. I know the issues at the local level. The fairness and the road thing that you started your business meeting with tonight, um, I have right here, and I certainly see your concern with that. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mike. Uh, this concludes our WTA uh, candidate forum. I'd like to thank you all uh, for coming, yep. and why don't we con uh, conclude the program by giving a, another round of applause for all the candidates that attended here. Thank you.